So what is Asperger's syndrome here? Uh, everything that you need to know about Asperger's syndrome. <laughs> Boom. Hey guys, welcome back to the Aspie world. My name is Dan, I have Asperger's syndrome, ADHD, OCD and dyslexia and I make weekly videos on this type of content so if you're new around here and like to learn more about that then remember to hit the subscribe button by clicking that notification bell. If you're watching over on Facebook be sure to give this page a follow and if you're watching on Instagram make sure to follow this account for more autism content. Boom! Guys what is going on? Love making videos, love being back here in the swing of things. What are you guys up to? Lovely to have you all here. My dog is here as well. He's just hanging out, you know, Randall the Vandal, what's going on? So basically, um, I wanted to do this video talking about what Asperger's is and kind of like all the things you need to know about Asperger's syndrome because I feel like there's a lot that people don't really know about Asperger's syndrome and since, you know, I want to just cover all those things. So um, yeah, that's why I made this video. But if you're new around here and you haven't already downloaded my free PDF Life Hacks for Autism book, then you can do it at autismhacks.net. Go there right now and download your book for free. Super dope. Okay guys, so, um, you know, let's be frank about it at the beginning. Asperger's syndrome is now referred to as autism spectrum disorder. Let's just be super frank, right? Um, autism used to be a, a split off into several different kind of naming conventions and nomenclature, like high functioning autism, low functioning, blah, 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 classic autism and all this kind of stuff and you basically get the picture um, but uh, all this changed in 2013 when the DSM which is basically the American uh, uh, kind of like dossier for how you diagnose neurological and mental health conditions then referred to an umbrella term for all those conditions called autism spectrum disorder so it took away the kind of need for just Asperger's syndrome just classic autism and all these kind of like terms and there's a good reason for those things as well but they kind of changed it so you know what is Asperger's syndrome if you're saying oh, so, okay so if it's part of autism what is Asperger's syndrome so basically it's an autism spectrum diagnosis that's characterized by quite a few common personality traits uh, that have lower support needs than other spectrum disorders so there could be somebody on the spectrum who needs a lot of support daily um, you know going to the bathroom um, you know getting around maneuvering there's kind of all kinds of stuff but in terms of Asperger's syndrome um, it was a, um, it, well, what used to be called Asperger's syndrome is just an autism spectrum disorder with low support needs. Now, I have listed out four ways that you can identify these type of traits of Asperger's syndrome in people, right? So the first one is eye contact. Now, autistic people generally um, have issues in make, making and maintaining eye contact because eye contact can be difficult for people on the spectrum. It's something that's quite personal when you're dealing with somebody. And as autism is a communication issue, then, you know, having that communication, deep kind of eye contact is difficult for people. And that difficulty stretches across the board because it's not just, um, eye contact that they have issues with, you know, communication skills across the board, but eye contact is probably one of the most common ones to kind of look and say, like, oh yeah, that person's not really making or maintaining eye contact, and, I, and it kind of sticks out, you know, because people generally do make eye contact. Now the next one is talking cons constantly. Now talking constantly is quite interesting. So autistic people will have an obsessive topic of interest, like a certain topic or genre that they will just love and they'll dive right into. And when they get talking about it, they will talk non-stop. Now, if somebody comes over to me and starts talking about social media strategy and SEO and web marketing and digital media marketing, I will not shut up. I just kind of, I love this stuff. I love talking about it. All the books I read, all the podcasts I listen to, all the, the YouTube channels I'm subscribed to are all about the subject because I love it. I love that subject. I'll talk about it for hours and hours and hours and people get really bored of that. So this is a very awesomely uh, common topic of, uh, of, of Asperger's syndrome where it's a common trait where you kind of just talk about your obsessive topical interest just indefinitely all the time. So number three is social skills issues. Now socializing uh, is difficult for people on the autism spectrum due to the lack of the understanding of the unwritten social rules like you know uh, the hand gestures and distance to to be a part of something talking to them when it's your turn to talk, when do you talk, when do they talk, what's your volume level to talk at, all of these things are unwritten social rules of social conventions that are just picked up by people on the autism spectrum that are just picked up by people who are not on the autism spectrum just because they are something that they pick up. Now people with autism don't typically pick these up because it's difficult for them to do that, right? So um, you can always tell when someone's really diff having a difficult time when uh, you are um, in, the, in, you know, in the midst of, of a social communication, uh, they're having a difficult time communicating socially. This could be down to the fact that they're on the autism spectrum. Now, number four is quite an interesting one. This is not understanding jokes. 
Autistic people take everything literally. My friends use this to their full advantage and just absolutely tell me all kinds of garbage. And I believe them for ages and then they make fun of me for ages for it because they're just like that. But I love them to bits and they mean no harm or malice with it, they're just being funny. But jokes and sarcasm can be so difficult for someone on the autism spectrum to kind of really understand and get. You know, take everything at face value, take your word for it and really take it literally. So if you are confronted with somebody who um, may not understand jokes and what you're kind of putting out there is in terms of jokes and sarcasm, then this could be the fact that they are on the autism spectrum, basically. Now, if you found this video interesting, please share it on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next one, guys. Peace.